Hello and welcome to this episode of Trash to Track. In this episode, I'm going to be looking at this Hornby Large Prairie Tank Loco. And I honestly can't remember where I got this from. Uh, it was either eBay or a toy fair or somewhere like that. But it was sold as a non-runner. Um, and the guy said it had been modified electronically, which I think means it's DCC fitted because there's a chip visible in the cab. Unless it's a zero one one module, which would be interesting. So I'm going to give the model a quick dust off. I've had this for about 18 months, sat on the shelf, and I thought it was about time to try and get it running again. So dusting off all the cobwebs, etc. And it is quite a handsome looking model. It's a large tank engine compared, when you compare it to the uh, smaller Prairie that's made by Backman, and that will feature in a future episode. Now, giving it a quick battery test, there is no life at all. Um, I do recall when I bought it, um, the guy saying that it was a, a non-runner. I just can't remember where I bought it from. So I'm going to have to open this up and have a look. So to open um, one of these up, I'm first going to remove this front pony wheel, which has had the wheel replaced. That's not an original wheel on there. That's more of a uh, scale uh, replacement, maybe a Romford wheel. But when I can get this screw out, which appears to be fighting me somewhat at the moment, the pony wheel comes away, and I'll set that aside, and it reveals a screw there, and I'm hoping that when I've undone this, the body shell will come away from the chassis. So with that screw removed, I can't get hold of anything, the body is, does indeed come away from the chassis, and I am delighted to see it is DCC fitted, although the chip may have gone, that's probably why it doesn't work. So I'm hoping the chip's all right. It seems to be wired in okay, and there aren't any burn marks on it. So uh, hopefully we're on to a winner. The one thing I do notice when I take the body shell off is a rather strange um, smell. It smells like modelling oil, um, or that sort of that sort of smell to it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo these retainers and have a look under here. Um, one of those is the uh, is the pickup wire there, and this comes away. And just as I thought, there is a lot of oil on this model. It is absolutely swimming in oil. There is all under here. Um, I'm just going to wipe it off with a cotton bit of meth, and you can see it on the other side there. This horrible yellowy oil, and it's everywhere. So I'll just uh, speed this footage up. Yeah, there was a lot of oil on there. So whether this model's been over-lubricated, I'm not sure. But then removing the motor retainer, that as well is swimming in oil. You'll see it underneath. I mean, look at that. There is so much oil under this model. It, it must have just been sprayed out of a can on it or something. It really is um, well over-lubricated. So all the oil was removed with cotton buds. Um, some of them were just dry and some of them were coated in methylated spirits and then I'm just going to gently prise this motor out of here because it's held in place with black tack from underneath and I'm surprised to see that it is the cheapy type cam motor that's usually found in the likes of Smokey Joe and that I didn't think these models had this motor but there's all oil under here as well and you can see there it started to react with that black tack. So there's, there is oil everywhere in this model. But I'm removing the motor because I'm going to... Well, firstly, I want to clean all the oil out. And secondly, I'm going to give it an independent test away from the decoder. I also want to take this intermediate gear out to make sure that it's not split. Um, like we saw in the last episode. And that's also caked in a film of old dry grease. So you can see there the orangey stuff that's gone like earwax. And then a cotton bud in the um, gear arbiter there shows that there's a lot of oil down there as well. So it does need a thorough clean. So now that that's all been cleaned, I'm going to wipe this horrible hardened grease off the rim of the cog. And I'm pleased to see that this cog is not split. It is in serviceable condition, which is good. So I'll just give this a thorough clean up and then... Uh, Apply some fresh grease and put that back down into the, well, I suppose it's the gearbox, really. That's where the gear sits. So cleaning this up, I get the uh, the old toothbrush out just to get all the teeth 
um, clean. There was a, f a few bits of scenery, like static grass all in this model. It was, it was in there and it had been stuck to the uh, oil. So I've unsoldered the decoder for now and removed this suppressor thing. I don't think they're necessary anymore. So I'll remove them if I can. And putting the battery direct to the motor proves that the motor works. So at least the motor works and we will get this model running. Now going back to that suppressor, some people might say, well, why are you removing it? Um, if you go back a few episodes, I did a um, an 08 up for a, a mate of mine, Pete, and the suppressor on his um, 08 had actually burnt through and uh, had actually marked the inside of the body shell. So they're more trouble than they're worth. If I ever DCC fit anything, I do remove them. So now that gear has got some fresh grease on it, I drop that back into the hole and then just put a tiny amount of oil onto where the gear pinion sits just so that it's well lubricated because now I've wiped everything over with a cotton bud of methylated spirits. All of that oil has been removed and the die cast chassis is now dry. So you have to replace the lubrication but this time I'll use the correct amount. So I sit the motor back in and just push it down firmly back onto that black tack. And once that's back in place, small amount of uh, silicon grease again onto the motor worm. And uh, you only need a small amount, just push it in the gear tre teeth and that will spread through the drivetrain. Test with the battery terminals and the motor um, spins there just to spread that lubrication. And then it's a case of refitting the rear motor mount now that all the old oil has been cleaned off it. And once that's been screwed back in place, I then fit that front mount thing that covers over the uh, motor worm. And I must remember to put this uh, tab back on. This is a pickup from the chassis to the, uh, to the decoder. And speaking of the decoder, we'll also reattach those orange and grey wires back to the motor terminals. And I will give the decoder a test on my layout controller but i've got a feeling having looked at the decoder there's no burn marks on it i've just got a feeling this is one of those that doesn't support dc running which is why it wouldn't run with a battery test so it doesn't take much just to tap those uh, wires back on and now i've got the loco in the loco cradle because i really do need to have a look at these axles and uh, what's going on under this keeper plate because if there was so if there was that much oil on the top of the model, I dread to think how much is under here. So the keeper plate unclips, unscrews, and then lifts away. And there are some hardwired pickups. So because of the amount of oil that's um, showing under here, I'm just going to desolder these two pickup wires, and I'll reattach that later on. I'm going to lift the whole wheel set out, and I don't know how well it picks it up on camera, but this whole bottom of the chassis here was absolutely dripping in that yellow oil stuff. So this has definitely 100% been well over oiled. So using cotton bud and meths, I clean everything up. I clean all the wheel, um, the bearing holes and all down the side. You can see just how much dirt is coming off that. And then the actual base keeper plate with the pickups on. This, you can just see it there. This was glistening with oil. I mean, look at it. It is horrendous. Why do not over lubricate your models? I don't know why people fear, think that the more oil you have on a model, the better it will run. That's totally the opposite. You only need enough lubrication, um, a very small amount, just to do the job. You don't need a great deal. So I'm now undoing the crank pins using my hex driver there just to uh, ensure that I can clean these wheels and the spokes thoroughly. It saves the um, side rods, it, it saves them being damaged if I'm trying to clean the wheels. So cleaning the wheels, I use a fiberglass pencil because they were quite oxidised and then I finish them off with a cotton bud of methylated spirits just to keep them nice and clean. I also clean the wheel backs thoroughly as these had uh, slight oxidisation on them. The metal had gone a funny colour and there was also quite a lot of oil uh, on the wheel backs as well, which again interferes with electrical pickup and provides poor running for your model. So the cleaning the wheels, usual method, fiberglass pencil and cotton bit of meths and then an old paintbrush just to dust in and out in between the uh, spokes 
to get all the dust and these um, loose strands of scenery items away. I also unravel the um, windings from around where the crank pins are. There's uh, some fibers and that all wrapped around there. So they're all removed. And you can see there the comparison to the left hand wheel has been cleaned and the right hand one is still as it is. So you can see just how much uh, dirt has come off these wheels and now they are practically shining. So now I'm going to start reassembling the chassis of the model. And I start by putting the wheels, these sit in square, well I would say bearings but they're not really, they just sit in square cutouts on the chassis. There's no proper bearings to think of in this model. And then I just put a very, very small amount of grease um, on the drive cog there. Just uh, because we've removed everything again, it was very dry. And then using some oil on this pin dropper from Fleischmann, just put some oil on the axles uh, just to make sure that they're correctly lubricated and not over lubricated as they were before. Once that's all back in place, it's time to reattach the um base keeper plate here which was a nightmare to resolder i'm not going to lie i did actually regret unsoldering those wires but i got there in the end and uh, this is put back in place and the two retaining screws are tightened up and then it was a case of putting the pony wheels back on and then we'll rebuild the side rods and coupling rods and we're not too far off testing this model now So now that's all done, it's now back on its wheels. I'm going to put the body shell back on and the decoder, unfortunately due to lack of space, the decoder has to sit in the cab. So unless you're looking at this model at eye level and looking into the cab, you can't actually see the decoder. So it's, uh, it's not too bad. I nearly forgot to put the cylinder block back in there, which uh, wouldn't have been helpful. But to put the body shell back on, you engage two uh, lugs underneath the bunker. They slide into place and then the front retaining screw can be replaced and gently tightened up to hold the chassis back to the body shell. Now it's time to rebuild the motion and uh, putting them on the correct way with the oil box representations facing upwards. These were placed on and the hex nuts were tightened up to the, uh, to the correct tightness and the, side, and the piston rods were then added and the center crank pin was then tightened up it was quite fiddly trying to put the piston rod back into the slide bars but uh, these are quite fiddly models to work on they're nowhere near as complicated as um, other valve gear i mean great western railway locos have very simple valve gear to work on but it's just a bit fiddly i mean i'm conscious not to break some of these plastic parts that make up the cylinder block and the slide bars as i've done that in the past so now that those side rods are on, and you can see that I'm just tightening up that last centre crank pin. The same was uh, repeated for the other side on the other wheels, but that is now fully complete on this side. Just It's always worth checking there just to make sure your quartering is still okay. And I'm going to now clean this front pony wheel. Um, it's actually unclipped itself from the housing there. So this was given a clean as there was some carbon build upon this. And I'm actually going to change this wheel. I don't, uh, I don't particularly like it. The flange is extremely fine. And it doesn't really sit in that holder um, all that well. It's very loose and it falls out um, before you know it. You're carrying the model to your layout and the wheels fell off. So I'm going to look at replacing it with a genuine Hornby Prairie part before the end of the video. Just going to dust this pony truck off. And like I said, this, this clip's in there, but it's very loose. Not, uh, not keen on that at all, to be honest. And then this is put back in place with its, uh, with its relevant screw. And then once this is back in place, we'll have to take the loco over to the test track, um, the DCC track, and see if that decoder's okay. So now the model is all back together. It's looking pretty smart. What I'm going to do is I'm going to replace these couplings um, with some smaller NEM uh, Hornby type that will push fit into those um, holes there. So looking at it, this large prairie is quite a nice model. There's a fair bit of detail on it. You can see those driving wheels there are practically gleaming. They almost look gold in this light. But you can see now just the amount of dirt and oil that was removed off this model. 
And here you'll see it on the sea wall. This is a still from the video. And I have replaced the couplings and that front pony wheel to a correct size one. So the DCC decoder did indeed work. There was nothing wrong with it. And here we have the large prey running around the layout on a freight train. If you've got an engine or vehicle you'd like to see featured in a future episode of Trash to Track, please email me at dansmodelrails at gmail.com. We'll have a look at getting it sent over, and who knows, it may even feature in an episode all of its own in the future. I'll leave you now with the large prairie running around the layout on a mixed goods. Thank you so much for watching Trash to Track again. Please like, share and subscribe, and I will catch you in the next video. Bye for now.